Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Arizona Deliverance Center. Sorry about the pipe bomb that went off out in the hall there. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, most of you haven't. We had a major sewer break here, and uh, it's been unbelievable. I never faced anything like this in my life. It's just unreal. Every they tore everything up on that side of the building, jackhammering the whole nine yards all over the place. So be careful where you walk out there. I moved some of the tiles out of the foyer there and the hallway and stacked them on the sides so nobody would trip over them. So be careful if you would. Number two, uh, before I get started, I wanted to pray for Rick tonight. He's preaching over at a church in Mesa tonight. So I wanted you to join with me for a second. Father, tonight when Rick speaks at the church in Mesa there, I pray for the Holy Ghost anointing on his life. He's a wonderful minister and a great teacher, but nothing can be accomplished if the Holy Spirit is not moving. And so I ask you to bless him tonight. I want you to touch each person that hears him tonight. I want you to plow through that church over there and deliver every person who's being oppressed by spirits. I want you to heal every person who's physically ill, too. And I want you to bless his service and give him a huge anointing tonight. Big one. Amen. All right, secondly then, thank you for all the donations you've sent in. Uh, every time I turn around, I'm having to write checks for thousands of dollars. And uh, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for your prayers. It's been uh, fantastic. Appreciated you responding. Okay, let's get to the best part of the service, which would be the announcements. Here they are, December 29th, part two, the invisible world. You don't want to miss that. And... Yeah, it's working. Okay. And uh, tonight we're on uh, YouTube. This is our YouTube teaching channel. You just go to youtube.com slash House of Healing AZ, and you can follow along every Thursday and Friday night. Plus, you can get all of our other teachings. If you switch from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, they'll pay us money while you surf the web. You just put in Hardcore Christianity, they'll donate to our ministry. If you know somebody who needs to be uh, delivered and they can't come here, you can just send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send you the miracle list. This thing works 100% of the time. Please remember our monthly prayer group. We meet on the fourth Saturday of every month next door at the Healing House. The Carters are running that for us. Are they here tonight? There he is. There's Mike. Ask Mike if you have any questions. Fourth Saturday every month at 11 o'clock next door in the Healing House, our residential facility. And then uh, right after that is my deliverance training class, December 23rd at noon uh, in here. The small sanctuary has been destroyed. <laughs> and... <laughs> We'll be meeting here in the main sanctuary for the deliverance training class, Saturday the 23rd. All right? The bookstore is closed, so you cannot buy these deliverance training course. But as soon as the bookstore opens up uh, in another two or three years, we will have this available. You cannot buy the Seven Churches of Revelation right now because the bookstore is closed. It will be open, uh, I think, within a few months. And then... Our Zoom, though, is not shut down. It's super. This is our Wednesday night Zoom service, 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send you the code and the password. Okay? You wouldn't believe the number of people getting delivered on the Zoom. There's like 100 people on there. One person after the other. The anointing breaks the yoke and lifts the heavy burdens. That's what Isaiah said. The anointing is the key. The Holy Ghost is the main feature of the ministry. Ladies, Monday night, you have a Zoom service. Please send me an email. I'll send you the code and the password. And Tuesday nights in here, not in the small sanctuary. 
is the uh, ladies' meeting at 6.30 p.m. right here in the main sanctuary. The last, the last service was absolutely fantastic. Uh, women's seminar coming up January, okay? Please, please, uh, I'm getting a lot of emails from people coming from out of town. That is fantastic. It's the 20th of January here in the main sanctuary for the ladies. Okay, Peter's healing, uh, healing service is coming up ASAP here. So that'll be here in the main sanctuary. All right? And that is on the 20th. That's on the, what, what's the date of it? The 30th, I'm sorry. I, for some reason I thought it was the 20th. I can't be. The 30th, okay? The 30th of this month, right here. The last one we had was, two. I think two months ago, it was the bomb. Wonderful anointing. You can download our Tithely app and donate to the ministry if you want to. Boy, do we need it now. And you can donate here tonight on the boxes or on the door. Thank you for saving us. You can donate on the website as well. Those donations have been fantastic. Thank you so much for helping us. If you want to uh, catch my radio programs, you can go to the homepage of the website. Then you can hit the media button, and then you can hit the streaming radio shows uh, tab, and they're all there. All my old radio programs are archived there from 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, and Saturday and Sunday afternoon on 1010 AM Christian Radio. And on Sunday, I am on at 8 o'clock in the morning on 1100 AM Conservative Talk Radio here in the Valley. And an hour later, I do my podcast on twitch.tv. Just put in the code HCCADC, and you're there. We're together. Sunday mornings at 9. YouTubers. Um, you need to set up an ambush team in your church, assuming you haven't had a sewer line break. You set up an ambush team. What you do is you get two or three deliverance people together, and then you hunt down the sick people in your church, and then you start picking them off. And as they, one gets healed, then you'll get another one come to you, then another one, then another one. That's how it works. Starts a snowball. I know, how, I know how it works because I did it. I did it at the Dream Center years ago. I had so many people. I didn't know what to do with everybody until I got caught. And that was the end of it. Then I ended up over here at the House of Healing. So. Okay. Here's interesting books I wrote, which are not available. They are. Bookstore is closed for a few months. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to be open. I don't even know when it's going to be cleaned. I wrote a book on mental illness, I wrote one on healing, and another one on Satan. You can get them on the website, but you can't, can't get them in there. Now, tonight, uh, our broadcast is on YouTube and Rumble every Thursday and Friday night, okay? live. You just put in those codes, and you're there. And then it's rebroadcast on these platforms. Kelly set us up on these, and you can watch the teachings later. Oops. Um, here's a social social services announcement. Uh, mental illnesses are skyrocketing in Maricopa County. People are moving here left and right. This is a growth state. And uh, if you need mental uh, illness help, if you need uh, services in that area, they have one available now in Mesa. Here's the address of it. It's called the Assertive Community Treatment Team. They are opening one up uh, in Maryvale, the old Maryvale Hospital. They're reopening their uh, mental health clinic there. And uh, they have a 24-hour hotline. You call that 800 number if you know somebody that needs treatment or help. Okay? And uh, you can get assistance in Mesa or very soon in, in uh, Maryville, in Maryville Hospital, okay? And I'll have that posted as soon as I get it opened. But uh, here's some help for somebody. There's an 800 number. Write that down. You know somebody's having a psychotic break or something of that nature and they need help. 
they can find it there. I'll see you in California on December 23rd. I'll be there Saturday for a deliverance training seminar for my old friends in uh, Carlsbad. M&Ms. Okay. Uh, yeah, I taught a, uh, I had a teacher in my last podcast that I got a lot of nice uh, reviews on. I had only taught a portion of it, so I thought I would hit the whole thing tonight. Um, there seemed to be some interest in it, so I thought it would be helpful. There are two types of M&Ms, right? <clears throat> you got your regular M&Ms, that's this one here. And you got your peanut M&Ms. Right there. You ever seen those? Okay, they're, they, they taste great. These things are fantastic. Uh, they're not good for your diabetes. Okay? So if you have diabetes, recommend you avoid these. But there are, there's two types of M&Ms, okay? And there's uh, people that like regulars that don't like the peanut. There's people that like the peanuts that don't like the regular. Again, the, this, is, this, is all, this is the medical portion of the tree teaching. There's two types of ministries out there, you know? There's a regular ministry, which is 99% of all ministries. You know, you pastor, minister, evangelist, youth pastor, driving a church bus. Uh, what are some other ministries? You know, youth pastor, uh, assistant pastor, associate pastor, this and that. And, you know, you go through a process of training in order to get into those ministries. Uh, you could be an outreach pastor. You could be someone that witnesses on the street. You could, there's, a, there's hundreds of different kinds of ministry, and they're all great, and they're all positive. And then over here, in this small section, where less than 1% of the Christians get into, is the Holy Ghost ministry. Okay, so you got all these ministries, 99.9%, 99% of the ministries are all over here. They're big ones, and they're all good, not, not knocking any of that. But over here in this small section, is the Holy Ghost preachers. Hello? Yeah. And there's a total difference. Look, you want to be a pastor, associate pastor, and so on. Those are great ministries. Go ahead. You go through a certain amount of training. Maybe you go to Bible college. Maybe you go to seminary. Then maybe you tutor under somebody. Whatever it is, every, all the ministries, they have a certain amount of training you have to go through. But in this section over here, this is the Holy Ghost ministry. It has a different process of training. Okay? All the other ones are good. This one's completely different. There's M&Ms, and then there's M&Ms. There's ministries, then there's a ministry. Okay? For example, here, this guy here, who's that? He had a Holy Ghost Ministry. He was in the little one percent section over here, right? Who's that guy? This is the greatest book on healing I've ever seen. Right here it is, Christ the Healer. I think we sell it in our bookstore. It's the best one I've ever seen. Period. Head and shoulders. That's a guy named F. F. Bosworth. He and his brother used to travel around in the twenties and thirties all over the country. They had. Unknown, unknown numbers of people healed. Unbelievable ministry. Uh, Bosworth was in the 1%. Who's this guy? William Branham. Okay, there's his tombstone in Indiana. There it is. Right there. People travel there, travel there all over the world. They kneel down in front of his grave. And they pray. Right here. Bill Branham. He was in the, he was in that little section over there, the Holy Ghost section, 
right? <clears throat> Who's this, who are these guys? Uh, flows. <laughs> Here's uh, Jack Cole. Same body type. Similar body shape. That's what threw you. Who's that? A.A. A. Allen from down south in Miracle Valley. There he is. Uh, what were these guys? Well, they were in the section over here. <clears throat> Who are these guys? Well, they were A.A. A. Allen's uh, protégés. Remember these guys? There's Don Stewart there. There's Leroy Jenkins. Remember these guys? Don't remember? No. This guy was one. I was I was this guy's counselor for a while. This guy I was almost his counselor, but uh, he canceled. Okay, these guys had enormous gifts. They saw you wouldn't believe the number of people healed. Amazing. Who are these guys? Here's Parnum right there. The uh, back in uh, you know century and century and something ago. Uh, speaking in tongues, boom, blew up in the United States. Where was it at? Bang. Topeka, Kansas. Started right there. This guy started it, Parnum. Who's that guy? Hmm? Yeah, who's that guy? Bill Seymour, a protege of Parnum. These two guys, he was at Azusa Street too. He took over from when his collapsed. This guy took over. Again, these guys were what? Who were the men in this section? No, they were. They were over here in this section here. Yeah. The Holy Ghost section. Who's that guy? That's our, that's our boy, Neil Frisbee. Northeast Phoenix, there he is. Remember Neil? What's that? That's the old Capstone Auditorium. Have you ever seen it up there? It used to have that big, that uh, steeple type thing, and it was lit green. It was you could see it for miles. And there, uh, Neil, there's old Neil when he was young. Traveled all around the country. He's faith healer, traveling faith healer. All kinds of healings. Who's this person? Close. Uh, there's Amy Simple McPherson. Uh, inspired by this woman. Who's that? That's Sister Etter. Yeah. This woman here, the most anointed human being that ever lived in the United States. She was, she was in this little section right here. I mean, tiny section. Super Holy Ghost minister. Who is that? Amy Simple Affairs? Monstrous Holy Ghost. Started a church in L.A. called the Angelus Temple. Remember? It's still there. Been remodeled and everything. <clears throat> she used to have, once a month, she'd have stretcher day. And people would bring their disabled people that would get healed and carry their cots home. Like God of the Book of Acts. She was in this, she was in the little Holy Ghost section. She wasn't over in this section. Who's that guy? John G. Lake, and this Lake was his protege. That's John Dowie from Zion, Illinois. Faith healing started in America. Where? There. Dowie, Zion, Illinois. That's where faith healing kind of started in America. 1900 and whatever it was. Okay? I find this interesting, even though I'm, I might be boring you. This is kind of, kind of a historical look at the moving of the Holy Ghost in America. Kind of what this is. He what? He was from another country. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, he, he moved here and went to Zion, Illinois, and uh, took over the entire town. And then healing started spreading all over the country. And Lake came out of this guy's ministry. 
and Lake had so many healings, it was unbelievable. The guy was incredible. Who are these characters? Oh, there's Benny. Okay, I'm going to skip that one. Look at the, who's that one? Catherine Kuhlman, inspired by Sister Etter. And Benny Hinn was inspired by Catherine Kuhlman. You got these ministries here. This, these are M&Ms, regular ones. And then you got the peanut m and Oh, man, the Holy Ghost ministry. Totally different than the other ministries. Who are these guys? Oh, there they are, the happy hunters. They traveling evangelists, all kinds of healings. They specialized in uh, getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Remember that? Back in the 50s and 60s? Oh, they were great. Who was that guy? Paul Cain, traveling, traveling faith healer, years ago, back in the 50s. Okay, well, let's, let's skip to this then, see how that relates to it. Luke chapter 10, it came to pass that Jesus entered a certain village, it was Bethany, and a certain woman there named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, and she sat at Jesus' feet and heard the word. Now here you got two people living in a home in Bethany, and they were good friends with Jesus, and their brother's name was Lazarus. Okay? And all three of them were close friends of Christ, and they were all powerful Christians, very dedicated to God. Martha was in this section of ministry. She was a server, and she was a hard worker. She was a woman of faith, and she put her shoulder to the wheel and just went after it. Hardcore servant of Christ. Mary, on the other hand, wanted to get into this section here, the one over here. She wanted to get into the Holy Ghost section. You had Mary and Martha, sisters living in the same house, both of them powerful servants of God, but one was in this section, and the other one wanted to get into that section. With me? <clears throat> I'll let you in on a little secret here. This Bible study is me trying to find somebody here tonight or on YouTube who wants to get into this section. I'm not interested in that section. Okay, you can go do that anytime you want to, whenever you want to. This is different. I want to try and inspire somebody somewhere to get into that section over there. That's a 1% section, okay? Mary, wanting to get into the Holy Ghost section, sat at Jesus' feet, gobbling up God's holy word. Notice that? Martha was cumbered about with much serving. Okay? Perispao means to be drug around. Have you ever walked a dog that didn't want to go your direction? And they'll kind of dig in like that, and you're kind of dragging them over here. Then you got to drag them over there. Well, that's what that Greek word means. Martha was being drugged to one thing, to another, working on that, working on this. All good things, okay? None of it derogatory, none of it negative. She was a minister of the gospel, and she was very determined to do her ministry work. And it was all good work. Yeah? Martha didn't have any interest or desire in getting into this area. She wanted to stay in this ministry. Not criticizing her, nothing wrong with that. Okay? Tonight I'm looking for somebody who wants to get over here with Mary. That's my secret plan, see? 
When I come down here, I got secret plans. One of them isn't plumbing and tile, as you can see. Wow. <clears throat> Very proud of myself, though. When this thing blew up and everything, I didn't go back to drinking. I didn't. Even... <laughs> and Martha, who's busy with her ministry, busy, 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 busy ministry, pastor, preacher, evangelist, missionary, Sunday school teacher, youth, youth pastor, youth minister, busy, 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 busy. All of it's good. All that stuff's good. Go ahead and do it. Go stay with it. But if you want to, if somebody here, anybody here, The requirements over here are different. Different requirements. She's so busy that things are not going. She's praying and she, the, her answer to prayer is not coming through. Oh. Yeah. Modern day Christian, right there. Lord, please. Get Mary off her butt and help me minister here at the church. See that? Martha, Martha's doing good things, and she's a powerful woman of God. She's a powerful believer. But I'm not talking about powerful believers tonight. I'm talking about people that want to get into this section. Martha didn't want to get in that section. Martha didn't understand Mary who wanted to get into that section. Oh, you didn't hear that. People that are in this ministry here, thousands of them, don't understand people that want to get into that ministry. They don't have a clue. No clue. They don't know what she's doing. They don't understand what she's doing. They don't see the purpose in what she's doing. They don't see the end game of what she's doing. They don't get it. Why isn't she serving over here helping me with my ministry? We need to get these things done. Right? She left me alone. Tell her to help me. Martha not understanding what was happening. See, you can get so busy in ministries that you start developing maranamo anxiety. Uh oh. Pastors and assistant pastors and church workers get so busy doing ministry work, they start developing anxiety. Anxiety drives a person to get comfort somewhere. And you will find the devil creeps in with sin to alleviate the pressure the person's under in their ministry. He, he helps them. And then you see alcohol, drugs, affairs, Scandals. You see that? When you're too busy ministering, it causes Martha, you are very Merimnao, anxious and Tarasso agitated. You're anxious and agitated because you're not getting all of your ministry duties accomplished. See that? Martha loves the Lord. She's a strong believer. She loves Mary. She's her sister. But she doesn't understand what Jesus is doing with Mary. And she doesn't understand where Mary's going. Ministers will not understand what you're doing or why you're doing it. They don't get it. Too busy ministering, pastoring, preaching. I didn't get it all done. I got 
gotta give me, I got a deadline. I gotta do. You're very anxious and you're agitated. Okay? Jesus didn't say, we're fasting tonight. He didn't say, what you're doing is wrong. He didn't say anything negative about her ministry. But what was he doing there? Pointing out her lack of priority. To get into this section here, the Holy Ghost section, you have to have a different kind of relationship with God. You've you got to have an intimate relationship with God. And a burning desire to get into this section. Well, anybody can do it. No. No, they can't, friend. Almost nobody can do it. They don't teach you that in Bible college. They don't have that in seminary. How do you, how do you become a Holy Ghost preacher? They don't have that at Dartmouth, Harvard, the Christian Bible school. They don't have that. See, Mary didn't need to go to class or to college. She went right into the Holy of Holies. Martha didn't understand it. How come you're not helping with these cups, platters? What was Jesus saying here? One thing is needed the most. And Mary has chosen that part. Oh, you're not, you're not listening. You see, to get to this section, you've got to have a gut drive. You don't need that to be a pastor, a preacher, a minister, a missionary. That, that's all. All that stuff's good. We need all that stuff, and I hope, I hope if you're considering that, you'll keep doing it. But to get into the section I'm hoping you'll go tonight doesn't require that. It requires something different. What is that difference? It comes out of your guts. Mary was so enamored. She didn't care that her sister was upset with her. See, Holy Ghost people don't care what you think of them. Ministers do. Ministers care deeply what you think of them. Holy Ghost people don't. They couldn't care less. I think you see where this is going. She chose that part. God never forces it. They choose. John chapter 11. A certain man was sick named Lazarus. Who's that? Yeah. Back to the family in Bethany. And they all were close friends of Jesus. They loved him. He loved them. And they're in Bethany again. And Mary Martha, and he mentions them there. And he says... Lazarus got sick and he was dying and they knew they had complete faith in Christ. Martha was a strong, powerful Christian. She had total faith in the Lord. Mary, same thing. Everybody, no doubts, no question. Had, had Jesus been there when Lazarus got sick, nobody had any doubts. He would have been healed, period. They were all, both of them, women, powerful women of faith. So Lazarus got sick, and they did what? They sent an entourage to go get him and tell him about Lazarus. What are they thinking? As soon as he finds out Lazarus is sick, he'll drop what he's doing. We're, that, we're like that. We're tight. He'll come right back, and he'll be healed. They had no doubt of it. That's why they sent somebody. Total faith. Total believers. 
And, and they came to Jesus, the people they sent, doesn't name who they are, and says, hey, the one whom you phileo, the person you're friends with, the person you're fond of, he's sick. He's sick, and he looks like he's dying. He's very sick. Jesus says to them, hey, listen, this sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. So that the Son of God might be glorified. <laughs> here you see a major blasphemy going on here. If Jesus isn't God, this is staggering blasphemy, isn't it? Nobody gets glorified except God, do they? They do in other cults, but I mean, in the, in the Bible, do they? I don't think so. So here we have the divinity of the Son of God. About to spring out of what? Sickness? I thought we were having praise rally. No, this has gone bad on us. Now Jesus loved Martha. Now the Greek word switches over to what? Agapao, yeah. agape love. See, Jesus loved them and he liked them. Right? Any mothers here tonight? Anybody who's a mother? I'm not, using, I'm not trying to insult you. I mean a literal mother. Have you, have you have kids? Okay. Any mother can tell you that they love all their kids, but they like some of them better than others. Yeah, don't raise your hand and don't point at anybody. Mothers can love someone, but like, not like them very much. Okay? Particularly if they have maladaptive or asinine or imbecilic or idiotic behavior. I'm not, I'm not talking about you guys. Well, I see a couple of you. Yeah, you had it, but... Jesus had both. He liked them and... He loved them. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be, right? Carnal Christians struggle with that because God loves them unconditionally, but he doesn't like their behavior. He doesn't like their big mouth. He doesn't like them taking offenses. He doesn't like them arguing about stuff. He doesn't like them fighting over doctrine and Bible stuff. But he loves them unconditionally. See that? Jesus didn't have that. He liked them and he loved them deeply. Yes. And Mary, it says. Both of them. And when he heard that he was sick, he hung around for two days. He never went anywhere. And he said to his disciples, it's about time to go back. Well, the disciples said, Master... That's a Greek word, didaskalos. It means teacher. Teacher, the Jews tried to stone you the last time you went back there. Remember that? Why are you going there again? Okay. The people in the Holy Ghost ministry section don't, don't talk like that. The people in the other ministry section, they talk like that. They're, they're scared. The disciples are scared. Okay. The Holy Ghost people aren't. Jesus wasn't scared. They were scared. Ministers are scared. Do we start on time? How many people are there? What about the offering? Are you wearing a proper outfit? What about the haircuts? Are there, oh, you're anxious, anxious and troubled over many things, Martha. You're going to go there again? What are you, nuts? Jesus said, listen, there's 12 hours in the day, right? But if you walk in the light, you walk in the daylight, you won't stumble because you see the light of humanity, which is me. He's pointing to himself now. So if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light. What light's he talking about? It was symbolic. It's not the sunlight. It's the light in you. The reason there's so many jacked up Christians running around is because the light in them 
is darkness. Which is exactly what Jesus said in Luke. It's internal light. In them. You'll stumble if you don't have that internal light. Our friend Lazarus, friend, he called him a friend, phileo. My friend. Lazarus sleeping. I'm going to go wake him up. Wow. His disciple said, see, the, in, the, in the Holy Ghost world, you see things differently because your discernment level is different. If you're just, if you're just ministering, you're doing some kind of ministry, you just kind of look at things carnally. Well, if he's sleeping, that, that's good. Get him a nap in. But he wasn't talking about sleeping. He was talking about take him dead. Then Jesus plainly said to him, listen, Lazarus, dead. Now, after two days, he was, he was dead. So my guess is it was two days to get to him, and he hung around a couple days or something like that, similar to that. Anyway... Yeah, four days were eaten up before he got back there, right? Lazarus is dead, and I'm Cairo cheerful. I'm happy. Oh, but people in the Holy Ghost ministry understand things. Ministry people don't. Somebody dies, oh, no. Time to go to mourning, time to funeral. Oh, I'm sick. Jesus is, Lazarus is dead, and he's happy about it. What's wrong with the guy? Does he know how to minister? He doesn't minister. This He's over in this section. See that? There's a difference. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. Cairo, for your sakes. Whose sakes? He's pointing at the disciples. They're in this ministry area. He's trying to get them over in the Holy Ghost ministry area. I'm glad I wasn't there so you guys wouldn't believe Let's go get him. Then Thomas pipes up. Thomas is an amazing creature. I did a Bible study on him about a year and a half ago here. Thomas was raised by a parents who were, saw a glass, and it was always half empty. His dad was really bad, you know. What about this and that? Think we can do it? Uh, I doubt it. Well, what about this idea? What if we do that? Ah, uh, that's not going to work. His dad was a downer. Okay, so Thomas was very skeptical about everything. Anything that happened, he kind of saw the glass half. That's not a full glass. That's a half empty glass. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think this will go well. That's not a good idea. This sucks. That was Thomas. He was raised like that. And if you were raised like that, you're brainwashed. And the reason the Bible requires you to renew your mind is to get your parents out of your head. Because your parents aren't your parents anymore. You're now a born-again Christian. Your Heavenly Father is your parent, not your mom and dad. Okay? You are not to think like your mom and dad. No offense. They're not your parents anymore. You transitioned out of this world into the kingdom of light. So Thomas then says, well, I'll tell you what. All right, I give up. Let's just go with him, and we'll all become martyrs. <laughs> what the? What do you? When you're raised in a family that has chronic negativity, being a martyr kind of makes sense. It's not that big a deal. Oh my God, we'll probably have a car accident. I don't know, we could trip and fall. Yeah, let's, let's go. Okay, yeah, we'll probably get mugged. Okay, if you live in New York or something like that, yeah, you're going to get mugged. It's not a probability, but your atti it's your attitude. Your attitude. Thomas's attitude was chronically negative. That's why they called him <clears throat> All right, let's go. See you guys. We'll send messages to our family so they can get our graves ready. Okay, great. You know, Mr. Positivity. 
Let's go back to Jews. Let's go back 2,000 years together. When you dropped dead and you were a Jew, they had it figured this way. Uh, in Leviticus, you go seven days a morning, right? Jews. First three days were different from the last four. Right? The first, there were first three days of mourning, four days of lamentation, and then what? Bury. Right? Now, the three days of mourning were because the Jews believed that if you died, your, your spirit man stayed around the body trying to get back in. After the third day, your spirit went to hell or heaven, whatever. And then the, and then the lamentation days, four days started because there was no way the person could be restored. Okay? So the first three days, then you got four days, seven total. Remember? Then it says, when Jesus came, came to town, he found that, that he had been dead for four days. Okay? So the, there was a reason for that. He wanted to wait to the fourth day because the Jews knew that the guy was super dead. <laughs> and there was no way, had he gone the third day, somebody would have criticized him and said, oh, the spirit just got back in the body. Right. See that? On the fourth day, there was no question he was dead. And the Jews knew he was dead. And it was hopeless for him to be resurrected after the third day. He comes back. It's been four days near Bethany again. And it was two furlongs off from Jerusalem, which was what? It was a couple miles. Two miles, two and a half miles, something like that. Okay? And Mary, many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, Lazarus was wealthy. And he had lots of money. And uh, if you had lots of money back then, you got lots of mourners. Okay? So what they would do is the synagogue would lease you mourners, and then you had mourners who were your friends. So people that had money had lots of mourners, like Brother Jarius, whose daughter, whose daughter was dying, like, like uh, Lazarus. So they had all kinds of people at their house, dozens and dozens of mourners supporting them. And the synagogue, if you were poor and somebody died, they would send you one mourner to mourn for the person. If you didn't have any money, you were a nothing and a nobody, you got one. But Lazarus was a you know, well-known person and had a lot of money, so they had lots of mourners. And they were all comforting Martha and Mary. They were devastated. They were devastated because their prayers weren't answered. Typical Christian today. They pray for something. It doesn't happen. They go into the tank. They take it down. Oh. Where were you? Carnal Christians. Always question God. The ones in this section don't. The, the one in the ministry section over here, they do. They question him. Well, you know, we're, we're praying and we spoke it out. We spoke it into his gift and it didn't happen. What well, happened? So they start questioning God. As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went to see him. Notice that? Martha's in the ministry. She's very efficient. She crosses her T's and her, puts her dots and whatever that is. She does everything right all the time. She fixes it right, you know. Uh, she's not a sloppy housekeeper like, like maybe some of you ladies are. <laughs> And uh, your place looks like a dump. No, Martha's place was all set up. She had a little bit of OCD. Everything was in its spot. All the <coughs> cups were there. Everything's laid out. Everything's working just right. She knows what her job duties are every day, personally. She knows what her ministry job duties are. She gets everything done. She's very intelligent. 
very motivated, very driven woman. She hears that Jesus is out there. She bolts. She doesn't even tell Mary. Why? She's so hurt. She's in the ministry and she's hurt. You wouldn't believe how many ministers I've counseled over the years who've been hurt, broken. She was a broken servant of God. Why? Because she was now disappointed in God. Very common for carnal Christians. They pray for something and it doesn't happen. Oh, I was kind of disappointed in him. And the more that happens, and the more the devil sees you doing it, the demons watch how you react when your prayers aren't answered. They watch you. And they see how you react emotionally, and that's where they're going. They want your soul. They want, they want to know how you feel. And so when they see you're disappointed over something, they'll bring another disappointment in. And then another one, what they do, they try and stack them in there. And over a period of time, as the disappointments stack up in your soul, emotionally, the person starts to doubt and have unbelief. The demons literally manufacture it and build it in your soul. And she's crushed. Mary didn't know what was going on. Martha just bolted very efficient, heads out there, and then she can't overcome her disappointment. Here she goes. Remember this, a powerful Christian, a good woman of God in the ministry. Lord, I'm so disappointed in you. Here's the way we believed. Here's what we believed, and it didn't happen. The higher your faith on something and it doesn't happen, the longer the fall down. Boom. Her faith was here. They said, hey, we'll send these people to get him. He'll come right back. And I have zero doubt Lazarus will be healed, period. She was 100% perfect faith. But when he didn't show up and Lazarus died, her faith started to tank. Martha, because she was in the ministry, because she wasn't in this section over here, she didn't understand that God was trying to take her faith from where it was, excellent, to off the chain. Right. She didn't know it. Are you listening to me? Your faith sometimes increases through disappointments. You follow the psychiatry of this? There's some psychology here, isn't there? Yeah, I think there is. I believed God and it didn't happen. And behind the scenes, God was telling you, hey, I'm trying to get your faith up to here. And you don't know it. Or Martha, good woman of God, in the ministry, doing great. And her faith was tanking. 
She says, but, but, I know. Strong Christian here, real strong. I know. Whatever you ask, a father will give you anything you ask for. And Jesus said, he let her in on the secret. He had a secret. Martha, I'm going to try and get you over into this section by using disappointment. So now I'm going to give you a little nudge, you know, kind of a <laughs> your brother shall rise again. Oh, Martha liked to blew her skirt off. Her mouth. Uh. Now the Holy Spirit has gone beyond her faith level. Exactly where God wants you to go is where you currently can't get. Now he's nudging where he wants her to go. So Martha comes back powerful, powerful woman of God. Well, I know he's going to be raised from the dead at the resurrection. When you come back, at the rapture, yeah, I know that. I believe in that. She believed it. She wasn't faking. She's Martha, hardcore believer. And then Jesus says to her, the greatest and most powerful verse in the Old and New Testament, the bullseye of the Bible is right here in John chapter 11. The greatest verse in the Bible is this one. I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, though you were dead, Yet shall you live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Oh, wow. Then he says to her, do you believe this? No, she doesn't believe it yet. She doesn't believe it yet. That's too much. It was outside her faith realm. And God was using her disappointment to push her out of her comfort zone. There isn't any way to get to this section of the Holy Ghost unless you're pushed out of your comfort zone. There's no way to get there. Amen. She says, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, Christos, the Messiah, the Son of God, who should come into the world. She couldn't take any more. She'd been pushed as far as she could go, and she bolts. She went up to the Holy Ghost division and left. Like 99% of all other Christians, they come up to that section there and go, whoa. The requirements in this area, I think I'll go back to pastoring. I got that covered. This is too much. I'm out of here. She runs for it. Who she run to? Somebody who wants to get there. Did you happen to notice that God didn't call for Martha? Did you notice that? He called for Mary. Why?
The teacher's here. He's calling for you, Mary. She finds out about it and does what? People in this section over here, the Holy Ghost division, as soon as God speaks to them, they immediately move. Quickly. She's out the door like Hussein Bolt. She runs out to meet him. The Jews saw her run out and they go, wow. We're on salary here. We might as well follow her. And so they did. They said, well, she probably run to, run to the tomb where Lazarus is. She's probably crazy because he's, it's fourth day now and he's gone. He can't be. He, the spirit man left. It's all over. She's going to the, to the grave. Then when Mary came there, what happened to her? Well, she, was, she wasn't in the Holy Ghost division yet, but she was headed toward there. But the same disappointment. See, if you live in a family, a, a work environment, a church, or what have you, and you keep saying disappointing things, other people absorb them. See? If you live with a spouse who's a Coke, they'll say disappointing things all the time. It kind of seeps into your soul. People that say negative things are extremely dangerous because they influence everybody around them. And people that are weak or susceptible suck it in. And they develop Doubting Thomas Syndrome. They become idiots of negativity. I know what you're doing now. You're thinking about the exact relative I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of you. And yeah, your relatives are nuts. Okay, here it is. Here it is. If you had been there, same thing Martha said 50 times at home. She heard it 50 times. She started saying it. It became a part of her. Right. People that say negative things are like cancer. And it just seeps onto the other person. Right now, there's a monumental plague level outbreak of measles in England. Measles. That's yeah. the most contagious illness known to man. If you get near somebody with the measles, you got it. It jumps right on you. Extreme danger. No treatment for it. You can't get rid of it. When I was a kid back in the 50s, I got vaccine for thank you. polio. <laughs> Can somebody get, who said that? We got security. <laughs> Stephanie, get her out. I got vaccine for measles. <laughs> The other one, I, no, I didn't, uh, that, that's a different subject. I don't want to get canceled on that. But I got vaccines for measles, see? Thank you. you peons didn't get it. I got it. We got it. Where'd I get it? Okay, boom. Kidney garden. End over mic. I'm screaming, ah! Boom. It hurt. Kidney gardeners are hurt easily. Lord, if you had been here, my brother, negativity is worse than measles. It's a sicker disease than measles. And you get it from your parents. You're raised by garbage parents who are chronically disappointed with life and everything else, and it just oozes out of them, and it pukes all over you from grade school on up. Right. Doubting Thomas. It's a textbook example. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Well, that's a true statement. Both of them made true statements. When Jesus saw her and the Jews weeping, Jews who mourners, 
He groans. Now, this is a really interesting section of text. If you read it, if you don't stop and think about it, it sounds nuts. Imbramaomai means to snort like a bull. Like if you saw a bull, you've seen the Mexican uh, fighting bulls, they'll go like that and snort and they're going to charge. That's what that word means. You're snorting at something that's pissing you off. <laughs> Why would he do that? Why would Jesus do that? Why was he snorting? <laughs> Why was he mad? Where did he snort? Verbally? No. In his spirit, man, where the Holy Ghost reigned without restrictions. And he was, same Greek word, terrasso. That's what he said to Martha. Martha, you get jacked up over all kinds of stuff, Martha. You've got anxiety. Now he's jacked up but for a different reason, right? <clears throat> Where'd you lay him? See, Jesus got fussy. <laughs> Notice that? He goes right now. Now he's, <clears throat> where is he? See that? It's all business from here on in. <clears throat> Who's he looking at fighting? The people, the Jews? No, the devil murdered him. The devil gives people measles. The devil gives diseases. The devil kills. That's your real enemy, not other humans. Okay, Lord, you know, calm down. Let's go. Then the Jews said, Below, look, Phileo, he must have been very fond of him. They must have been good friends. Notice that? Why they say that? Because he appeared very concerned about them. They noticed it. And then they said, do you think if he would, if he would have been around that he, I mean, he, he healed these people who were blind. Maybe he could have helped Lazarus, okay? Oh, is, that, is that a good thing to say? Nope. Jesus in Bremen, he snorts again. Why? They don't believe him. They don't have any faith. Nobody's in this section. See, they're all in this section, the Judaism section. They're all in different ministries in Judaism. No Holy Ghost ministry, just regular ministries. He comes to the where? The grave? A Nemean is a, is a sepulcher. And it was a cave. Spilion is a grotto. So what happened was rich people didn't get buried, you know, because they had money. So they had these grottos where they dug out these huge caves in the rocks and the mountain. And then this rich guy would get uh, laid here. Then another rich guy would get laid here, right? And another one would get rid, and then the people would go in. You'd have to go into the grotto, put the body. Everybody had their little section in the cave. That's how it worked. When Jesus died, he had his own grotto that no one had ever been in before. See, this was not the case. There were other dead bodies in there. Okay? So he says, there was a stone laying on it. They were all covered up. Supposedly, this is it in Jerusalem. If you go... There you can get on the tour. This is on the tour, Lazarus's tomb. Whether that's the tomb or not, I have no idea. I doubt it, but it would have looked something similar to that. You would walk into a grotto and put a body in somewhere. So there'd be more than one body in there. And you had to have money. Jesus said, roll the stone away, take it away. Martha said, whoa, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, I'm Martha. I do everything right. I got it all planned out. Everything is, 
knick knack to knack to knick there it is. Martha's got it all covered. She's not loose with anything. All the cups and platters are all right there. Hey, we can't roll the stone away. Let's do some thinking here. He stinks. He's decomposing. What are we doing here? See that once again. Oh, man. God takes his children and tries to push them out of their faith comfort zone. Steph, you get pushed out of your comfort zone through disappointments. Disappointments after tonight are your assets in life. See, people that get all jacked up on ministry, they're doing a great job and they want everything just a certain way. And then when something gets diverted, it causes them a little anxiety. Hey, you're late, or there's too many, the chairs aren't set right, and this isn't. Well, Lord, he stinks. He's decomposing. It's four days. See, three days, morning, lamentation. It's the fourth day. We're in the lamentation period. Didn't I say to you before? Haven't I said it to you? Hasn't God said it to you numerous times? Of course he has. If you would believe, if you only believe, Can I tell you that? She doesn't say anything. They roll the stone away. And Jesus says a little prayer to Father. And to get into this Holy Ghost zone, I showed you all those pictures of those faith healers, remember? They, would, they got over here. They were in this zone. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other Christians never got in that zone. Correct? <clears throat> These faith healers, there appear to be a lot of them, but actually, if you look at the big picture, they were rare as hen's teeth. There weren't very many people that were in that zone. Correct? Jesus then teaches you how to, how to, how to get in there by starting out your prayers with thanksgiving. Paul picks it up in Philippians. Remember? See, if you start out your prayers during periods of disappointment with thanksgiving, oh, oh the devil's in trouble. Somebody's about to get their face kicked in, and it's not you. Okay, But you start out like doubting Thomas, God Almighty, I, I didn't think I'd be a martyr this soon. Yeah, those prayers there are not going to get answered. No thanksgiving. So Jesus is showing them. I'm praying to you, Father, and I don't need to. I'm just doing this for them. I thank you. I know you always hear me. I already know that. I don't need to say this prayer. But because of these folks here that I'm trying to get out of this section and into this one, I'm saying it. Why am I saying it? God does everything, anything for one purpose. What is it? So you will believe. He wants you to step out of your faith comfort zone. So he allows a disappointment to hit you. I don't know if I ought to tell you the story, but. <clears throat> 
couple of days ago, I'm going to take a shot at it. <clears throat> a couple of days ago, uh, you know, uh, I've been married a few times. You know, uh, it was always their fault. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, my daughter, Tracy, who led me to the Lord, uh, her mother, uh, family, I've always stayed friends with. And uh, my uncle in law is dying. Okay. And uh, um, he's in really bad shape. So I got the report from uh, my ex wife. And I thought, well, you know something? I love this guy, I like him, and I'm going to take a shot. So, a couple days ago, I said, where's he at? Well, how's, well he's over here. Banner, Thunderbird or something. Banner Hospital. Okay. I get me to the room. I go down there. I got lost in the parking lot, finally found my way in the building. Then I got lost in the building, finally found it. Eventually, after consulting with six or seven people, I got to the elevator. I go up to the sixth floor. Brought my Bible with me, in case anybody wanted to question me. They'd leave me alone. If you're walking with a Bible, people go, oh, God, cancer. <laughs> Yeah, well, this guy got measles. Whoa, he got a Bible. No, get away from that dude. So I had the Bible. I didn't want anybody to bother me. You know, I kind of use it as a, ah, there you go. Run, fool. <laughs> so I get up there. Nobody gets near me. I'm just holding it out like that. Hey, you want some? You want a piece of me? Come get it, sucker. I come balking in. Boom. There he laying in bed. I mean, it's, it's sad. The poor guy, he's down to skin and bones. His liver's gone. Both kidneys going. His, 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 he can't do dialysis anymore. So on. He, he's down to skin. He's dying. Okay. The doctors are trying to discharge him and get him out of there and get him to the hospital. So you know the routine. So his wife's there. You know, his wife's, uh, let's, you, to use it, some gentle terms, uh, not one of my fans. She knows what I do over here, but I mean, no, I'm, I'm talking no, I'm talking about wife no. She warns my ex-wife, is he coming up here? Well, yeah, he wants to come up and see Paul. Well, Okay, he needs to watch his behavior here. I don't want to talk about demons here. I, I had gotten warned. I was warned. I said, I got no problem with that. I go up there and I sit there and talk to him, chit chat. I get assess the situation. Well, Paul, I want to pray for you. So I, I let him in a proxy prayer. And. You know, I wasn't sure he was saved, so I went for that first. And then I tried to get him to, to repent and confess his sin and all that. I worked on that stuff first. And then I said, you know, Paul, <clears throat> hey, listen, uh, this is a hopeless situation. You're going to be dead in a couple days if we don't get a miracle. It's obvious. The doctors told him that. They understood that. I said, so... Hey, what do, what do I got to lose? I got nothing to lose. I'm going to take a shot. That's my job to take a shot. It's your job too, right? So I went at it. I put my hands all over the body. I prayed all over the place. And I got done praying. And uh, I said, uh, 
Paul uh, I says to his wife and uh, she just kind of whole time kind of staring at me you know when we went to prayer she kind of bowed her head but kept her you ever seen that <laughs> you ever been in church you ever seen people pray in church they're praying like that but they're, they're looking around there they go she's looking over at me while I'm praying I said I says to her well okay we're done praying now God God can touch him right now no problemo tell me something what couldn't he do when I before I came here she says well he couldn't sit up I said sitting sitting up <laughs> for the Holy Ghost no problem sit up come on sit up I'm not gonna touch you sit up right now and he hesitates I said, come on push it we prayed and that's it now sit up he sits up the wife gets starts to get saucered <laughs> and so then I start having a problem I said what do I need to do here so I grabbed the guy's covered took him off Paul, let's go. Put your legs out here. And she got up. And, you know, so I said, look, okay, I'm not going to do anything. But look, when I leave here, you're probably going to get recover quickly. And if you can do more than sit up and get out, Get a walker, walk, go do something, keep going. Keep keep reaching out with your faith. You sit up, didn't you, Paul? Hey, that's God touching you. Come on now. Exercise your faith. Step out with your faith. You know, I went through the whole routine there, trying to get him to move out of his comfort zone. See? I was trying to get her to move out of the comfort zone with about me and God. See? I tried my best. I did everything I could. Martha, didn't I tell you that if you would only believe, you would see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you that? Oh, hold on a minute. Got to shut it down. Like I got shut down. I was trying to move them over to the Holy Ghost area because they'd already had the church area. A couple of pastors had come in, a chaplain came in. You know, I'm not interested in that. I'm listening to the Holy Ghost area. So I see things differently like you do. You see things differently too, don't you? The reason I thought he could be healed was because I've seen that happen a thousand times over the years. God will send them a little miracle or a partial healing to boost their faith. And then if I can encourage them, I try to get them going. And boom, some of them get healed. And they just keep going. See? Kind of building on faith by faith. See? That's what I was trying to do. They didn't, they, I was going too far out of their comfort zone. They didn't want to do it. Hey, I did the best I could. You know, I did I did all I could. You know. Here's the point. I said it so these people would step out of their comfort zone. See that? The only way to get to this section of ministry is to be pushed out of your comfort zone through disappointments and being thankful. Thankful for my disappointments heads you into that direction. Am I helping anybody? 
when he spoke, it says he cried. Crow Godzo, uh, Godzo is to yell. Crow Godzo is to yell very loud. He screams. Lazarus, come forth. Why do you say Lazarus? Because the grottos, they had had other bodies in there. So if he'd have just said, come forth, you'd have had a rack of guys coming out. They wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't have known who Lazarus was. Who, which one has the napkins? So he picks out one guy. He didn't pick out any of the others in the grotto. You see that? There he is. The greatest miracle of the New Testament. Boom! Lazarus raised from the dead. What was the purpose of it? To save Lazarus? No! It was to move all these people out of their comfort zone over into the Holy Ghost division where miracles occur. I had already been pushed out of my comfort zone. I was ready to go. I said, Paul, sit up. As soon as he sat up, Paul, you ready? I yanked the covers off. As soon as I yanked the covers off, she flies out of the chair. Are you, are you following this? See, people who won't move out of their comfort zone for their faith never end up in that division. They always are over here. Let me see me let him go. Jesus already told told us about it, didn't he? He sure did. Lazarus was the uh, first one. Here it is. <clears throat> Jesus made this prophecy about the future resurrection. You are going to be raised from the dead. Just like Billy Graham and John Lake and whatever, and just like Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. Everybody gets raised from the dead. No one stays in the grave. Four sixteen. The dead in Christ, Paul said, will rise first. John 5. Everybody who's dead will hear him someday. And they will be raised from the dead. Some will go to the resurrection of life. The others to the resurrection of judgment. But the point is, everybody is raised from the dead. And everybody gives an account of their life to God. Not one person escapes. Every Christian, every sinner, John Lake, Adolf Hitler, both of them give an account of their lives to God. And that includes you and I. Jesus uh, was in the earth dead three days, right? <laughs> three days. He got anointed for his burial three times, right? Simon the leper, Simon the Pharisee, and last time, who? We know who. Here it is. He's at Lazarus' house again, as usual, because he loved them and they were friends, remember? And they were making a supper, and Ma Martha served. Now Martha, being a powerful Christian, had grown in her faith, and now she didn't say anything when Mary wasn't helping her. Notice that. See, if you can use your disappointments 
to your advantage, you will grow spiritually. Who are you disappointed with the most? Other people. Other people drive you totally nuts. And if you can overcome that and use that to your advantage with thankfulness, you'll be heading for this division. The division almost no one makes it to. You're the exception. Martha was serving and she didn't say anything about Mary. Mary wasn't helping her again. And Lazarus was sitting there at the table and guess what happened? Then Mary came in with a litra. What old English word do we get for a litra? A liter. A litra back then was 12 ounces and it cost about a year's salary, average salary. This stuff was extremely expensive. It was a special oil and uh, it was made out of some grass in India. It was imported, cost a fortune. And she brings it in and she anoints the feet of Jesus and she undoes her hair and lets it down. Women back then all had long hair and she mops up her feet with her hair. Well, what was she doing there? Heading toward this division. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Catherine Kuhlman sitting at her dad's funeral. She was a daddy's girl. He's dead. She's crushed. And at that moment in the funeral parlor, there was nobody there. She was the only one left. And she handed her life over to the Lord 100%. She used her disappointment in losing her dad to move out of her comfort zone to this level of faith. What was the result of that? Well, you ought, to, you ought to ask me. I was in one of her services when I was a teenager. I saw it with my own eye. I saw the results of what? Her dad's death. dad's death. Your disappointments are the best asset you have. It's God inching you to another level of faith. Even if your faith is solid like Martha's, he was trying to move her here. John Lake's family Almost all of his brothers, sisters, dead, sick, and died. Why did God allow that? Well, there was only one way to get him out of this section here into this one. Now his sister's dying. Lake is frustrated with God. Everybody but their and their pets had prayed for her. She kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Lake grabs his Bible in frustration. He goes in the living room, he throws it. Hits the fireplace mantle. It hits the ground. Boom. He goes over and looks at it. He opens it up. It fell open in the book of Acts. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. The light bulb goes off. Lake's faith, lay faith is here, but all of a sudden, he sees it now. All sicknesses are of Satan in one way or another. His sick sister dying launched his international healing ministry. Why did God allow it to happen? To move him into this division.
You had a loved one and you prayed your guts out for them and you did everything you could to save them. You know what happened to them? They dropped dead. Do you know why that happened? To help you. They died to help you. Sister Edder buried every child she had except one. They all died on her. Why'd that happen? She, she went over here. She used her disappointments as her assets. Now, if you're in this area here and you're just doing ministry here, ministry there, you're doing fine. You're doing a good job. Okay. None of that may happen to you if you're in this area, but if you want to go to that one, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Where'd you lay, Mary? He didn't call for Martha. He called for Mary. He didn't need to call Martha. He knew she would stay in that area. She was doing her ministry work. She wasn't going to leave it. But he wanted to move Mary over here. But Mary had a different behavior, different attitude, different concept of God than Martha. Hers was different. Martha didn't spend a year's wage for the anointing on his feet. Mary did. He didn't call for Martha. He called for Mary. If I asked you to name your top three or four disappointments in life, you'd probably take a minute and you'd come up with them. Yeah, it's this, it's that, it's this, that. Could you do it? What is that? What is this? What is that? What are... Those are your stepping stones to this division. You got to go up the stairs to get over here. You can't stay down here where Martha is. Statistically, 5,000 ministers a year in the United States, quit. 5,000 a year in this country leave the ministry. Ministers, pastors, youth people, whatever, out. The Methodist Church split. The Lutheran Church split. The Southern Baptists Massive sex scandals, Boy Scouts, Catholics, constant, chronic, satanic fornication. Have you had some major disappointments lately? Guess what's happening behind the scenes? God's trying to get some Holy Ghost people to save this country. It's currently headed to hell. Right now. 5,000 quit a year. Sex scandals, Hillsong, perverts in the church everywhere. Satan's taking everybody down. But not you. You're going to count up your disappointments. You're going to go, hey, this was a heartbreaker. That was a killer. This destroyed me. Thank you, Jesus. I think I'm ready to go to another level and take another step and make my move now. I just heard that Bible study. I just saw him talk to Mary. I saw him talk to Martha. I heard what he said. That's God's word. 
I've been Martha long enough. I think I'm going to move over with Mary, kind of go over in that area. Maybe I'll go with a John Lake. He took all of his family deaths and applied them to decades of compassion for the sick. Why? Because he had faced it all through childhood. Everybody in his family was sick and died from the time he was this hall to this hall. Everybody dying. What was going on there? God was saving Lake. Hundreds of thousands of people got healed through his ministry. Where did he get that ministry? Along a trail of tears. There's the door that blocks the Holy Ghost division. Do you know what it is? Self-pity. You don't have a ghost of a chance in hell of going anywhere in the spirit if you got self-pity. You have no chance. You can have a ministry over here. Okay, that's a different... I'm not talking about that. Talk about this section over here. The Holy Ghost section. The door stays shut when you knock on it with self-pity. You have no chance. Well, my, my parents were this. My, I was raised like that. I got sick here and I uh, got abandoned here. My spouse did this. Nobody's going to answer that door. Because you got self-pity. I didn't get the breaks. My life sucks. I can't believe it. Why did it happen to me? Why me? It happened because God was trying to prepare you for your ministry. And you didn't know it because you're spiritually ignorant. Well, Brother Mike, you don't talk like Joel Osteen. No, I don't talk like Joel Osteen. I'm not interested in Joel Osteen. I'm interested in somebody who wants to get into the Holy Ghost division. I don't need a bunch of ho Joel Osteen yeah, dribble. They don't get into this division. He does a good job. He's encouraged. I, I listen to him. Yeah, I like that. Joel's fine. He's, my, he's a good guy. I'm talking about something different. Is anybody listening to me? This is the division of tears. Those people just didn't do me right. Hmm. Nobody likes me. They don't listen to me. I gave them a word. They ignored it. Oh. I got self-pity. What's my future look like? Uh, do you know what suck means? That's your future. That's your future. <laughs> self-pity bolts the door. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you don't understand, brother. I was abused. I was abused. No, you don't understand. You were being prepared for miracles. Praise God. You don't understand. My dad, my brother, my guy, I need to come in for counseling. My dad, he, he beat the living hell out of me when I was a kid. No, you don't understand. When you come in to see me, I'm going to explain it to you. 
those beatings were your miracles. You get two choices. You got a third, actually. You can have a Martha ministry, which is good. You can have no ministry at all. Yeah, that's up to you. God leaves the choices in your lap. He don't take them. But I'm a, can I find somebody? Maybe somebody on YouTube's listening to me and I say, "Hey, I get it. I, I want, I want a, I want a Mary ministry. I don't want a Martha ministry." Maybe you're in a Martha ministry and you don't want to stay in that ministry and you want to go transition over. Good idea. 5,000 a year down the tubes. Church is splitting all over the place. Scandals flooding Christianity. Major scandals. Yeah. Doubting Thomas became a spiritual monster. The day of Pentecost, he no longer thought like his dad. He finally got his dad out of there. The glass was no longer half empty. It was always half full. James, Peter, John, the whole rack of them, all of them, went from here, disciples, ministers, useless, to Holy Ghost preachers. Philip and Stephen at the revival, they got it. Yeah. They got picked on. Hey, you're serving tables. You're, you're busing. You're picking up the trash. Go. They went and did it with thanksgiving. They went from table serving ministry, which is a good one. It's a valid ministry. They went over to the Holy Ghost section. Any person, any Christian can go to that section. How about you? Yeah. I'd like to get in that division, Mike. You convinced me. I did, huh? Let's embrace your failures and your losses and your abandonments and your beatings and your moment state. Let's, let's grab it, scoop it up. Let's move in. Self-pity? No. Thanksgiving, oh, oh, the door opens. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are hearing my prayers. I already know you always hear me, but I'm saying that for these people. I'm trying to get them to move into this division. That's why I'm praying out loud so they can hear me. That's what he was saying, in essence. I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I'll close with this then. I'm over at the Dream Center. I love this place. I teach over there on Tuesdays. And this girl sitting there, a couple rows back, and I'm teaching on some different bunch of emotional things, and I was teaching on the spirit of rejection. And I went over and pointed at this girl here, and the Holy Ghost jumped on her. 
and she started crying. Is anybody here from the Dream Center? Were you there that day? Were you there that day? I go over to this gal, second, second row. What's your name? Aaron, yeah. She's sitting second row, third row in, sitting right there. I just went over and I pointed to her and I said, a lot of people have broken hearts and they can't get over it, like this woman. And she, she burst into tears. And I dismiss the class, everybody leaves. She doesn't leave. She comes up to me in the back. I said, hey, look, I know you were abused. You went on drugs, whole deal, right? Yeah. Well, the things that happened to you were allowed by God so that you could be a minister of the Holy Ghost and would have compassion for people who were abused and on drugs. People think I'm, I'm on crack, but your drug addiction was the best thing that ever happened to you. What did he just, give me the knife, Bob. That's the best thing that ever happened to you. Because only a drug addict truly understands another drug addict. I don't know what it's like to be on crack. I've never been on crack. Drug addicts, their lives who are destroyed, have a compassion for other drug addicts that other people don't understand. And so I explained to them, at first they look at me like I'm from Mars, but as I go through it here, Your sickness and your failures and your losses are the best asset you have. Right? Yeah. When you grow up like this poor gal here, thank you, Jesus. Everybody taking advantage of her, looking down on her like she's a doormat. Father looked at her like she was priceless Praise God. and if she'll just receive it she'll be completely healed tonight see there that late gal I pointed at just happened to her see him jump on her that's love because the Holy Ghost loves her and likes her let's pray then